The pit barrel cooker is a drum style cooker that we're going to dive deep into the details today, coming up. You may have heard of an ugly drum style smoker or a UDS for short, where you basically take garbage cans, 55 gallon drums, and you turn them into smokers. Well, the pit barrel cooker is a little bit of a modification of that idea in the fact that here we have a 30 gallon drum that's been made specifically to be a charcoal smoker. Now, what's all the rage about these charcoal smokers that, that, that makes the pit barrel so popular? It's the fact that it's relatively inexpensive and it's almost a set it and forget it style smoker. There's also a lot of cooking capacity when you hang the meat on the top of the smoker. We'll talk more about that in a second, but this smoker is really a set apart from the rest of the race when it comes to smokers and grills because it comes in at such an affordable price and it's known for putting amazing bark and color on meat. So let's take a look at some of the specifics here real quick. The pit barrel comes with a 240 square inch chrome plated cooking grate that you can use to put any type of food that you'd like to smoke on. Or it's actually designed to hang meat from these reinforced rebar rods that are hanging from the smoker and there are hooks that are designed to be able to put on each one. Now, if you're just using the chrome plated cooking grate, you could probably get maybe a rack of ribs and then a second rack if you cut it in half because the, the complete width of this smoker isn't enough to fit multiple racks of ribs unless you really trim off the ends. But when you start looking at hanging meat from the smoker, you start looking at how much room you have if you're hanging the ribs vertically inside the smoker. And that's really what this is designed to do. This is really a hanging meat directly over uh, a live fire type cooker. Now, if you're used to an offset smoker, or if you're used to a pellet smoker, or you're used to those types of smokers where the fire isn't directly exposed to the meat, you're in for a treat when you start looking at the pit barrel cooker because really you're talking about a bed of coals on the bottom that's lit in such a way that it's giving constant heat but yet the bottom of the meat doesn't burn up when the top of the meat is still raw. There's something about the airflow inside this cooker that allows it to make sure that the meat is still moist even when it's only hanging a few inches above the fire. That's what's unique about this cooker. Now, there's a charcoal basket in the bottom of this cooker, and with this charcoal basket, it's made to be able to hold the charcoal that's unlit and lit before you actually get this, this cooker started. Pit Barrel just came out with a modification for the bottom of their charcoal basket where it actually puts a plate on the bottom where you can lift the charcoal basket out and take all of the ash with it. But what it does when it ships is it comes with a charcoal basket that has a uh, expanded metal type bottom and what that allows you to do is be able to put charcoal in but all the ash falls through the, through the, to the bottom of the cooker. In order to actually get that ash out, you either have to take the cooker, dump it upside down and dump it out, or just take a vacuum and sweep it out once the coals are cold. Now, I really like the idea of this cooker, and the thing is, is that there's really no setting of the temperature on the pit barrel cooker. To me, that's really novel in this idea where we're all fighting to control our exact temperature with every cook. So the way that you control the temperature on this is really only set by your elevation above sea level. So if you think about it, there's really only one air intake, and you can see it right here. This is a very small three inch port here at the bottom, and it has a cover that covers the port. And then you just set that port open based on your elevation above sea level. Well, so for anybody between, uh, you know, I think it's 500 feet and 2000 feet above sea level, you just want this about a quarter of the way open. Um, here where we live, we're at about 817 feet elevation above sea level, and so that means we're just barely cracked open here. Now for those who are in higher elevations, you want to either move it to a half or three quarters open, um, but the thing that I wondered is can I actually control the heat on my pit barrel cooker if I actually mess with this and let more air in? So more on that in a second, but this is the air intake and the output vent 
is really only coming where the reinforced rods go through the cooker. So you see these small holes that are up here. Um, you see the rods that go through. That's really where the air comes out. And there's one on each side of the cooker for each re piece of rebar. And that's where the air comes out. So what I was wondering after I cooked a few cooks on this via the instructions on their website is if I open this a little bit more, say halfway, here where I am in the Midwest United States, if I could actually get more heat and actually get a little bit stronger fire going in this unit. Well, it turns out I actually did get a stronger fire for a first couple, two or three hours, but then after, uh, after that, it kind of started petering out and dying, so I didn't have the longevity of a fire that I was hoping for. So that was one of the things that I found interesting about the way the, the pit barrel cooker works, is that really you're best suited just to follow the instructions and let it roll. Now I've heard about plenty of pit masters who are out there modifying this cooker and they're trying all different types of things. But in my experience of the tests that we've run, I find that just following what they say to do actually results in some fantastic food out of this pit barrel cooker. Now, so people ask all the time, how hot does the pit barrel cooker run uh, since you can't control the, the fire? Well, in order to talk about that, you need to talk about how the pit barrel cooker starts up. When it comes to lighting the pit barrel cooker, they have detailed instructions on the pit barrel website, but let me walk you through a little bit of the process. This is what helps determine what your fire is going to look like and how this is going to operate. They encourage you to take out the charcoal basket and fill the charcoal basket completely full of charcoal. And in our experience, what works the best is regular old charcoal briquettes. And you want a briquette that doesn't put off a lot of harsh flavor whenever it's initially lit up, primarily because the, the pit barrel cooker is going to need to be constantly lighting new charcoal throughout the entirety of the cook. Well, how does that happen when you can't get down to the coals? Well, what happens is you start by pulling out one quarter of the briquettes that you would put in that full charcoal basket, and you put them in a charcoal starter. You put them in a charcoal chimney, and you get those started up as hot as, hot as you can get them, and then you start by sprinkling those over the top of the charcoal basket, and what that does is it just basically starts little pieces of charcoal throughout the entire basket, so you have an even burn as it burns throughout the remainder of that basket. What that means is you're gonna have charcoal that's unlit, that's going to be lit throughout the process of the cook, and you don't want a charcoal briquette that's going to give off a harsh flavor when that lights up each time. So there are certain charcoals that are out there that really deliver that and certain ones that don't. And we look forward to here pretty soon being able to have a guide for you on our website and here on YouTube for charcoals that talk about just that. So look for that coming up in the future. This cooker runs between about 250 and 315, 300 degrees. When we first light it up, we'll find that this cooker will run in excess of 400, 450 degrees, but then as it continues to burn over the first half hour or 40 minutes, it'll settle down into the 300 degree range. Now, for us, we, we don't usually smoke things at 300 degrees. We'll cook at 250, maybe 275, but cooking in the pit barrel cooker at 300 degrees it cooks faster than almost any other cooker that we've used here at the Barbecue Lab, and we've tested quite a few. And why is that? It comes back to how the air circulates inside of the pit barrel cooker. What happens is you have that meat directly over the fire, and you have this, this air and the smoke that's circulating inside the barrel as it's going in and out. And what we found is that it cooks meat in a fraction of the time that we would experience in any other cooker. We have a Traeger over here that we use. We have a Pit Boss over here. We have a Lone Star Grills over here. We've got, I mean, five or six grills within sight right now. And on average, almost every one of these grills will cook a full packer brisket in somewhere between eight and 10 hours around 275. When it comes to brisket, you could go ahead and stab the, stab the hooks through it and hang a couple briskets in there, but at max, you're probably gonna get you know, a couple briskets, not more than that. But most likely what you're going to do is you're gonna use the, the rack that the brisket could lay on instead of trying to hang it within the cooker. Now, this is where some of the things that I don't love about the pit barrel come into play. Whenever I'm trying to use the, the actual cooking grate that's chrome plated, I find that these rods get in the way of the cook quite often. Every time I want to do anything to the meat, I have two rods hovering over the meat that I have to take out or I have to, you know, kind of uh, set, side, set sideways, hanging out the cooker in an awkward manner, especially if I want to move it or I want to take it out to wrap. 
every time I do something like that, I have to, I have to work with those reinforced bars on the top of the cooker. It's not my favorite thing. It's, it's a small gripe that I have in an otherwise fantastic cooker. And that's primarily because even though this is made to hang things, I found that when I used it, quite often, I used it to be able to, to use the rack on top. So we used it more like a, a traditional barrel smoker with a, with a chrome rack on the top. So I've done spatchcock turkeys, spatchcock chicken, we've done um, briskets on the top, pork butts on the top, and all of those things on the cooking grate itself. And it did a wonderful job with them. Like I said, just my, my one complaint is that I always had to move the rods back and forth to be able to get gain access to my food. And like what we do here on our channel, we're trying to do cooking recipes and grill reviews and teach you some techniques to make you better at what you do. And it's hard to be able to hold a camera and manage the rods back and forth. So if you're not worried about you know, filming your cook, maybe it's not as big of an issue. But for us, it was something that we had to fudge with a little bit. Now the pit barrel cooker comes with a stand on the bottom and the stand elevates the barrel above the ground, whatever it is that you're cooking over. Now, while that stand uh, is made to be able to protect the ground underneath, it's only, you know, a few inches high, what, probably four or five inches high, it doesn't completely protect the ground underneath the cooker. So if you have this on, say, a wood deck, or if you have this on the grass or something like that, you wanna be careful to put some protection between the cooker and the ground as it can you know, discolor the ground underneath. So just wanna make sure that you're aware of that if you're looking at picking up this cooker for your needs. Um, but it's a, it's a great stand that allows it to stay out of the water in case it rains, it stays off the ground, and it keeps the bottom intact. So I uh, really like the stand on this. Now, when it comes down to it, the pit barrel cooker is really all about a couple things, at least in my estimation. It's all about taking this charcoal basket, filling it up, lighting a quarter of the coals and putting them on top, and then letting this thing just go. You don't have to worry about coming back, stoking the fire, adding more charcoal. This thing is good for a good solid six to 10 hour cook without ever refreshing the fuel inside this cooker. That's one of the things I love about this is its simplicity and its ease of use. You can load the charcoal on the bottom, take a couple of smoker wood chunks, stick them on top, and then you're good to go uh, for the duration of your cook. The other thing I really like about this cooker is it comes down to the flavor that it imparts to the meat that you're cooking. We're talking about a live fire in the bottom with charcoal and wood chunks, if you choose to use wood chunks. But the idea is your meat is suspended directly over a super hot fire and all of the juices that release from that meat are going to drip into your live fire. The idea is when that juice drips down, it automatically vaporizes and that vapor comes back up and it just seasons the meat as it cooks. We get incredible bark in the, in the pit barrel cooker. I mean, we have better bark on this than I have on many of the other grills that I have around here and the flavor is intense. Now, a lot of that comes back to the smoker wood that you choose and the charcoal that you choose to run in, this, in the cooker as well, but it gives you a really, really good flavor. And if flavor is what you're looking for, the smoke flavor, that charcoal flavor, then this is a really good cooker for you to consider. And I'd say definitely check this one out. Another benefit is the incredible vertical space that you have to cook with in this cooker. I mean, you're talking about the fact that you can cook 10 racks of ribs at a time I don't know many other cookers in this price point or in this size that you can say will do 10 racks of ribs. You can look at your Weber Smoky Mountains, you can look at some other ugly drum smokers. I'm not aware of any pellet grills that can do it. Um, the idea is this puts an incredible amount of meat inside such a small unit and that's an incredible uh, benefit of this grill. Now, the other thing is there's a lot of cooking options. There are some accessories sold separately where you can hang turkeys directly over the fire, the same with chickens. You could also uh, get different hooks and different accessories to hang almost anything you can imagine between these two reinforced bars or uh, using a cooking grate. Now, there's also a separate cooking grate that's available, and if you look in the description below, we'll link to this. But there's a cooking grate available where half of the cooking grate actually swings down so you can hang ribs on one side and cook a brisket on the rack on the other. And the same thing would go for a pork butt or anything that needs more of a rack as opposed to hanging. That's a fantastic addition or accessory you could get with this grill. 
Another great accessory is the one where you actually get a plate for the bottom of your charcoal basket, meaning you can lift your charcoal basket out after a cook and all of the ash will come with it and you just dump your basket out, plug it, and put it back in and you're good to go. Uh, without that, you end up vacuuming out this cooker or you end up having to pick it up and pour it out to get all of the ash and the char unused charcoal out of the bottom. So it's a nice upgrade that you could add to this cooker. We'll be sure to link it in the description below. It's just going to make it so much easier to cook on uh, when you're done and when you're getting ready for your next cook. One of the cons that I haven't talked about yet with this grill is that there's not a lot of vertical space between the actual cooking grate and the top of the lid. If you're going to be doing, say, a turkey for Thanksgiving, and you wanna be able to fit the turkey in this space, if you can see, there's kind of a rivet about right here as to where the height is, a traditional turkey is gonna be taller than this if you're gonna be cooking it a whole as opposed to spatchcock. And we found that out this last Thanksgiving as we took this cooker over to my parents' house for Thanksgiving, and we were gonna do a, uh, a, a turkey over there, we put the turkey in and we're really surprised we couldn't get the lid shut uh, by using the grate itself. So as long as you're okay with the spatchcock turkey, this height really isn't an issue, but that was something that came to surprise me a little bit. Now, I don't have the accessory pack that actually gives you the ability to hang a turkey between the two rods, but that's something that I might consider picking up and I will also link to it in the description below so you can see it as well. But that's just one of the cons that I, that I found with this cooker. And the other one is just the idea that the cooking grate itself is only a couple hundred square inches. So if you're used to a grill that's gonna give you 400, 800, 1,000 square inches from a cooking perspective and you want to use the grate, this is going to give you a lot, a much less, a much more limited space than you would have on a lot of other cookers. Now, as soon as you consider the vertical aspect of this smoker, you're really in for a treat because you can do so much as long as you're willing to hang the meat. So one of the cons and one of the pros, depending on how you look at it for this smoker. Overall, this is a fantastic cooker, and we're excited to see more to come from Pit Barrel. We've heard some rumors that there are some new ones coming out, and we're excited to be able to get our hands on those and put them through the same test that we have with this. If you're interested in seeing a cook on the Pit Barrel cooker, click the link up here where we have a spatchcock chicken recipe that we put together so you can experience this grill in action. If you'd like to see more outdoor cooking reviews on gear just like this and the accessories you use with them, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We put out a video or two every week to help you make educated buying decisions so you invest your money wisely on gear that will produce amazing barbecue for you. I'm David Gafford and I want to say thank you for joining us here on the Barbecue Lab and I can't wait to see you next time when we review more gear just like this for you.